All right, guys, welcome back. It's your host and caster back for the last and final set of the clan league clan war of clan league versus pain versus AOV in I cup clan league season 23. Yeah, we have a lot of seasons of this thing going on and in the top left hand corner for clan pain, which I'm cheering for will be Puri Yaya. And also in the and in the bottom right hand corner, which I have a personal connection with because this guy is fantastic. It is Wands, the blue pro toss Wands for Clan AOV. I'm gonna be cheering for for um, Pierre Yaya here though, but um, you know, but whoever, because see, oh also I also want to clarify something. Um, as you note, know, if you look at the overlay, it's 3-0. It's now 4-0. Yeah, Clan Pain, the, the, of course, like, the one, the, the, the most exciting match, at least for me, had a bugged replay. Of, of, of all of them, they had to have bugged replays. Just, that set, but regardless of the fact of a bugged replay, what we end up having is that <laughs> Pain won 4-0 so far. I mean, they are, I mean, they've dropped a couple matches, but, uh, a game, rather, but, I mean, really, they're doing so well. And we have a nine pool opening coming out up here. Yeah, yeah. Gonna be a little bit of aggressive here um, on Fighting Spirit. And God. And you know what's also more? Is that if you know anything about me or my casting, is that I hate Fighting Spirit. Okay? I hate it. Alright, like, I have a. I hate this map. And whoever chose to use this map. For the starting, like we need to ban this because in clan in clan league, we we we're not enforcing like the the we recommend a map to start off on, but you don't have to. Oh, is it an overpool? I'm sorry, it's an overpool. Excuse me. See, chat knows better than I do. Fuck. And Protoss gonna be opening up with a forge with a can first, just so they don't die, I guess. But it's cross position, so I'm gonna be able to get what next is first, but. That's uh, that's what they're doing. That's their opening builds and God wants is being annoying. But once these lanes come in here, that probe is going to have to evacuate out of there. No, that probe is still in there. No. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Here we go. That's right. He has thrown up the third. Okay, so Piriaya, opening up with the overpool and then going to go into probably standard three hatch play. Uh, either be it Muta, either be it Hydras, or either be it three hatch. Hide into three hatch into five hatch Hydra Queen play that we saw from Michael. Um, you know, yes, Fighting Spirit, and that's exactly Royal Hydra writes in chat. By the way, here, I, meaning Fighting Spirit is easy to take a third. Well, just as any other map that's a fourth player map for Zerg, this is not general location where you take a third. But anyway, taking that, we're, we're, I'm not criticizing any Zerg player because I'm not Zerg. Um, probably won't take that fourth, but this may mean that he doesn't have a, a great, a more aggressive mid-game plan, to be honest. I mean, when you, when you think about it, because you have to think, when you go into Brood War, and, and, and this is what I'm learning as a player as well. You know, I never thought of this as a caster, but like, what is your perspective? Where do you want to end up in the mid-game? Where do you want to end up? And this location ends up meaning that he's going to have a lot of units, he's going to be on the map, so he can take those other bases without, uh, you know, being Grissom, being on uh, Protoss's, you know, front door. Uh, if that will be successful or not, we'll, 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 we've yet to see. But Royal Hydra writes, here is to take an easy third. Good sir, this is why I hate this map. Because it's ridiculously easy to take your third for Protoss and Terran. Especially in TVP. Like, I, I, I have my handful of ZVPs because it's, it's like Zerg is like the second most popular matchup, especially in lower leagues. This is like Division A, so it's like, I mean, B, B plus, I think it's like B rank players or C plus rank players. But, I mean, these are decent people of decent skill. I mean, they're not top Koreans, but the, and he's blocking, oh, this is nice. This is really nice right here. He is blocking that ramp, and he's just denying scouting, man. This is great. Doesn't know the layer timing. He doesn't even have a layer. That's how cool he is. But, um... But yeah, getting back to my point, FS is like herp a derp a derpy derp derp Protoss hits three bases, and then we have a long macro game, and it's awful. Now, but also in my earlier latter, in my latter half of, of casting now career, 
I'm able to look at players' minds a bit more, so it actually makes it a bit more entertaining. But the fact, but the fact is still the same. That you have very long games sometimes on this on this map. But FS is FS. You know my opinions on it. Um, it's a good map. And what do we have here? We do have mutas. We do have mutas. Actually, no, we don't. You good sir are lying. Oh, oh you are writing meters. Oh, you say you generally go meters. No, we don't. He does have that second gas up though, which is questioning if he is actually going meters. But he has no lair. Lairless ZVP. You know what this is gonna be? This is gonna be a Hydra quote unquote bust. Um, that's what we're gonna have right here. Because other in it, because he, there's no reason to have his lair this late unless he's gonna just go in full on Hydra mode in a minute, which he has no Hydras. Okay, there we go. Lost Temple back in the day. Ah, dude, I mean, Terran OP, I'm liking that. I'm Terran. But, okay, so Hydras are coming out now. He should be ready to do this aggression stance right here, because keep in mind, no lair. Now just getting the lair. I, I mean, I have to assume, unless this is actually standard timing, but I don't think it is. So, uh, of course, there is getting deflected away. And also, let's look at Protoss. Didn't really pay attention to it before. All right, so he, he has... Okay, so he's going to go... Now, keep in mind... Okay, so... Like I said in the past... The past VOD. What did we see? We saw a Stargate and we saw a Citadel. The same thing. So you could say, oh, this is the same build. But the difference here is that he's getting plus one attack. And he's getting leg speed. What does that mean? He's going for a plus one timing push. Now, this makes it very interesting. Because... It's an interesting de d decision to take this build order because what is this build designed to do? It is designed to pressure that third base and try to keep, you know, Zerg on its toes. And I think we're going to have a very interesting mid game by the positions by both these players. If I am correct on the fact that he's taking this position for a more aggressive standpoint because Zerg wants to have general more map control than just sitting back by taking this base, then perhaps then we're going to have a lot of clashes, we're going to have a lot of battles, and that can be very exciting. And then it ultimately comes down to who has the better decision and who has the better micro, which honestly I think is a, is a fantastic thing to watch in Brood War, considering the fact that Brood War is so hard to execute and you just watch it being done. It's like, oh, I can totally execute that. It's like, no, no, you can't. You want to move Hydras from point A to point B? Well, good luck, good sir. Okay, we have a crap ton of links though, coming out of per Piriaya. And this could make sense as well, where Piriaya might be the more of the 2v2 standard player. I mean, I don't know if that's really... I mean, when I when I uh, hang out or play with my 2v2 pal when, that plays 2v2, he, um, he, he constantly says, like, yeah, my 2v2 play, you know, influence my 1v1 play. Now, I mean, that's like D rank, so I don't know if that's actually particular of anything, but... No, it is there. Now, interesting choice. He has a DT here. Did he decide to tech switch? Nope. He's still making zealots. Okay. He didn't double tech. But this is the scary thing. That is an ungodly amount of links. And he's getting lurker aspect. Whew. Well, this explains why he didn't get his lair super quick, because he didn't need it. Um, now we're just getting up the spire. Um... And this is one of those styles where you don't have to get up that spire super quick. I mean, he delayed his lair very, you know, drastically. I wouldn't say you would want to go spireless ZVP, but because uh, I've never seen it done before, but you can significantly delay that, which is pretty awesome. Okay, but looking here, getting up that plus one is plus two. That's an incredibly fast plus two. All right, he has the robotics for the repertory. He's just been thrown down here. Okay, we have a lot of links. And again, this is what I was talking about, guys. He's getting on that map in the mid game. This is what I was talking about. I'm not a dumbass. Woohoo! I'm not a dumbass. Woohoo! And good stuff being dealt here. I'm really liking it. All right, coming in here. Like he will retreat for the time being. Oh, is Zerg gonna take another base? No. Yep. All right, Zerg's gonna. Okay, Zerg's gonna expand down here again. Interesting locations, to be honest. I mean, these are awful locations when you think about them. 
Um, because you could, if he, I mean, if he's on the center of the map, regardless, he could just take a natural. But I guess it's closer to his base, I guess. I mean, he's playing in that regard, which is totally fine. I mean, if you look at Zerg's position right now, he's not in necessarily a horrible position. So I'm not going to be in the, I'm not in a position to criticize the Worldwide for comfortable criticism. Nice Scourge hits, killing off both Corsair, being a bit sloppy there. Not, not really paying close attention to them. I'm checking your mini-map. Um... And interesting, is he gonna go mutas? Does he know he's gonna go mutas before I do? And I have complete, I have global vision. No, he's going like mass rickling hydra. Like this has gotta be like old school or like a new build because yeah, you don't really see ling hydra that often. But hey, if it works, it works, right? All right, lings coming back over. Hydra's coming out. And he's going to be double expanding. Zerg, looking in a very dominant position. Again, he's in that center map control. He's built He's he's built himself in that I'm going to have good map control. You want to push out of your base? Well, good luck. But here we go. Keep in mind that Protoss hasn't really engaged directly. And I've been. I, this is the first time I'm actually giving a good camera shot of the actual army here. Which I really should have. <laughs> Um, because I'm a little bit taken back of how big this army is. Um, and, you know, on this map, just like chat has been saying, this map, pretty easy to take a third on. Keep that in mind. Taking that third quick, it could be... I mean, it, I, I can't really say... I mean, even in this style of play where you have such good map control... I mean, it's it's one ramp you defend, man. It, it, I mean, unless you have, like, Quick Dark Swarm before they have, like, Reavers or Archons. Uh, it's really... They, you can't really deny that third super easily. Unless, unless you deny it. Oh, okay. So, actually, Chad has been awesome because IRK at Tetris. I Irk Tetris has said, Peria likes to play Ling Lurker with Swarms and Scourge. Well, that is apparent. I'm not sure if you're... You're a, a, a proud fan of Piriaya, or you know him, or something. But um, that does from this watching this game, definitely like that. But that's nice to know because I'm following Clan Pain, and if he does that style a lot, then fantastic. Um. So, Wands, primary, a pretty big goon army right here. Could somewhat have a difficulty line. Uh, difficulty with the links, but uh, he is a very good 2v2 player. I know that. The, this is where Zerg is going to be like, okay, how do I engage this army? He's an A plus 2v2 player, actually. Damn. 2v2 sounds like fun. Oh. Uh. But god damn, man, like... Alright, so Protoss is going to be swooping around here, but unfortunately, a bit of a missed rally over here. Zelts are not going to be any there, any, anywhere to be able to tank damage for the time being right there. Now, if Piriaya had his whole army hockeyed or... Or mobile or whatever, he could have had such a good engagement right there, but it doesn't look like he, he could didn't fully utilize that moment. Um, not that you can not that you can always utilize the perfect moment in Brood War, but... Um, there's also seem to be some kind of harass, like DT harass probably right here. <laughs> In the top right hand base, I just did not capture. But, alright. Nice storm. Um, alright, how is he going to engage this? Kyria needs to engage somehow. Uh, nice storm's going down so far. Zealots, Wands looking pretty good. Uh, Lurkers, I don't see Kyria really engaging his army right now. This, this ball just seems to be killing everything in his path. Trying to micro back against the wall. All right, Ling's coming in here, trying to flank, but uh, just not enough. Piriaya army has seemed to disperse a little bit. Um, Wands and supply is godly. 170 supply. What can stop this monstrosity beast that we call Wands? He's a good player for a reason. Um, and that was an epic fail. Or, I mean, I'm not here to criticize Piriaya because, I mean, I'm a fan. But definitely, um, if he did decide to choose maybe a better engagement, he may have an easier time at this time. And maybe there wouldn't be a 90 supply lead in Wands' favor. But, 
I mean, I is that to be expected? Maybe. I know there's. I know Purchase has higher supply cost units anyway. At 200, I'm max Zerg is just ridiculous. All right, but here we go. Here's the swarm. This is what he wants. He wants that Lynx around. There are no zealots remaining in this army, and that's the most critical portion of that army. Um, because if these links you get start flanking from behind or from the bottom part, he can just start just doing massive damage. You know, fuck up the goons any way he can. The zealots again just not in the right position. They're on the wrong hockey. Um, they are faster than the goons apparently, um, and just are cut out of position right there. That was a good util utilization of that of that opening right there. Um, and just well. And oh, Greater Spire and Ultra. We're gonna have a lot of text. Piri, I are playing a very entertaining PBZ style that you don't generally see. And also, like, I, I think I think you know some people that don't, are, were in chat and they weren't like specifically Brood War people. But like that Death Ball sin like situation in Brood War in, in StarCraft Two that people often criticize about. I mean, but like. It, it's like easy mode when I think about it now. It's the first time I ever realized it. Oh, but hold on. Going in here. These zealots do so much damage. But here we go. The flag's coming up. Let's see what he can do. Can he do it? That is the question. This lair, though, in a bit of trouble. Trying to keep it alive. But it looks like it will go down. But, oh, Piriyar, gotta go for the counter. Here we go. This base is done. Protoss, you jerk. If you're going to kill my base, you're gonna, your base is done as well. That's why Piriyaya is going in here. That's his plan. And very good. He's going to clean up that base. No problem. And Protoss, what's his plan going to be? Afterwards. But this base is surely done. Can't find it. He's trying to target fire. Actually, I may have been a little bit preemptive on that. Is he going to get it? He's going to survive with about 200 HP remaining. Um, now, now, he needs to be careful. Now, he can't morph it into a lair and have extra HP. No, he cannot. Um, and a very entertaining PVC. But, again, what I was talking about, I mean, the fact is that Piriyaya is engaging in such a way that he's finding these openings where the Zealots are just not in a position to defend the goons. And like in StarCraft 2, where everything's hotkeyed in one spot, um, you know, in Brood War, you, might, you have to hotkey different things. So you may right-click on something and your Zealots will be off to the right, which is very difficult. You want to keep your, I guess, your Protoss in a ball in, in, in a way just because... You want to have the zealots, you know, out there so they can tank the damage. Or else your goons are just going to die from this Ling Hydra style, which is proven to be very entertaining. Now, chat's saying Protoss is too strong. I don't think that at all. Currently. I mean, the longer this fourth base goes up, for sure. And, you know, there's a, <laughs> there's a supply lead. But I think with Hive Tech now available, I think that changes up the game a lot. I mean, this army... This army right here is pretty, pretty big. And with 2-1 upgrades, eh, it could have been better. And he's going to have a plus 4 soon. Um, Greater Spire, I've yet to see what it's for. As he's never made needless yet. He's going to kill the Tides gun. But this army right here. This army right here. Versus this army. Who's going to win? I guess it comes down to the Stormers, probably. All right, here we go. This push. Coming out pretty strong right here. Doo -doo. All right, here we go. The game seems to be lagging a bit because it's stupid. Because it's stupid. All right, here we go. Pushing in here. Seeing what he can do, and it looks like it will get cleaned up right here. Um, Scourge coming in now. And uh, not going to be able to handle that much. Alright. Now what is chat saying? Zeke needs to expand and P will just tear down his army because if ZZ will lose his owner. Um, well, I mean, that's what Protoss is good at. I mean, late game... I mean, I mean, think of it this way. He, again, like, it's like... It's just how the matchup works, to be honest. I mean, Zerg has, I would say, good you know, good mid-game. I mean, at least in this build order choice that... Or the style that Piriyaya is playing right now. Definitely gives him really good mid-game control. 
Late game is kind of Protoss is kind of owning up shit. <laughs> um, and not to say it's impossible for Disturb to win. It's just, yeah. And, um, but this is, is, but this isn't, like, a massive, like, Archon ball of, like, destruction yet. Yet, I think. All right, here we go. The engagement's happening over here. By the same time, we have Guardians over here. Just want to keep that in mind. He is harassing behind all this. Ultras are tanky as fuck. And, oh, the storms, my god. Oh, Beautiful storms, but is Pyria gonna have enough right here? These ultras have like zero HP and oh But keep in mind we have guardians over here now I'm not really sure trading that whole army was worth it, but hey he has guardians harassing Pyria is playing an awesome game and This is something that Protoss may not have in my Dark Archon Maelstrom available. Oh, he's gonna lose to High Templar Got a storm. And is he gonna get the maelstrom off? It doesn't look like it. That archon. There we go. Decent, decent one. And now he's an arc uh, corsair, which will clean that up. Um, which is unfortunate, just because guardians have such down the tech route, invested so much in that. Chat saying possess the drone. We had that nightcap attack, man. Didn't really quite work out for too well, unfortunately. But maybe in this case, maybe it does. Maybe he can try. To Try to do that. Oh, that game was awful <laughs> for Dewalt. Just could not handle whoever that was. Uh. All right. Lurkers. <laughs> Go to Forge PSI. All right, Zerk. Okay, Zerk is stabilized his fourth. Protoss is stabilized his fourth. In general, not good for Pro for Zerk. Um, and you know. I don't really know how to contest this, to be honest. And Zerg, and this is really up to the player. This is what makes a good player. What do you do in late game ZVP? Because now it's not only just your, you know, mechanics. This part of the game is not mapped out for you, good sir. I mean, I, I hate to, I hate to call like the mid game of PVZ, you know, mapped out or the early game of PVZ mapped out. But I mean, in it. In general, to some degree, it is. You know, you open up with a certain build order, and we got a nice plague, by the way. You open up in a certain way, and then you react to it in a certain way. But late game, there's you, you have no build order for this, okay? This is purely reactionary. He needs to figure this shit out. Is he not mining gas? Is he really not? I mean, he has three gases going pretty strong. The one that's depleted. Yeah, so he's not having the... The greatest gas income. I mean, he's 604. He has more gas than Protoss counterpart. Oh, but the Reaver, nice plague. Oh, Period. Yeah, how are you gonna deal with this man? Ling's coming in here. He's getting scared of damage as well. Picking up the Reaver. Look, oh, storms. Oh, it makes it look so broken. Protoss coming in here doing mass destruction all over the place. Nice play. Plague on Reavers looks absolutely fantastic. And Zerg going to be retreated back. And here we go. Going to be taking this expansion down here. Protoss will lose a Reaver. It looks, like the, it looks like the shuttle has been taken down right here. But Zerg, I mean Protoss, in a very good position overall. Cannot get Lynx around it. He's gonna be going in this master right here. Um, can he do it? He has two white Templars that are, are astray right now, and not too great for him. He's trying. He's just re newly expanded here. And Piriaya coming with a lot of links and hydras and ultras. That's a lot. Those are, I think they're what they're called. Cows is what a lot of people call them. I call them ultras because they're awesome. Ultras coming here, starting to do the damage. No D swarm available. But this Protoss army is starting to get, get diminished right here. Just Zerg is all over the place. But Wanda still has a very high supply lead overall. But where is that supply overall? What are the worker counts right here? Worker counts are fairly low for both players. I'm not hitting, not going above the 50 minute mark. And again, really good positioning by Wand. And this is how you win the late game. Again, just great positioning all over. And what is happening over here? Let's check off what's going on. 
main base isn't really mining. Natural is still kind of going. Um, about to deplete that second gas. And this third gas is still mining um, ever so slowly, but he's lost his third gas. Um, and looking at the bank, Piria is still the crap ton of gas left, left over. Um, he needs mineral income right now, and he's expanded back down here to the nine just now while cleaning up the rest of this protest army. And which will get cleaned up. Protoss, though, where is his army? He is sending out a Zealot Task Force, probably to the 9. Uh, GG, though, coming out of Piria. He doesn't believe it. He can come back. Game 1 goes down to Wands for an epic PvZ. Um, which I highly recommend for anyone that want a good time. Hope you guys enjoyed the cast. I have to do a short bathroom break because I'm awesome. And then from there, we will... Uh, obviously, if there's another game... Then, uh, Pain may 6-0 their, uh, or 5-0 them, the, uh, AOV. But we'll find that out next game, guys. We'll see if this could be an ace match. I really hope Piriaya can win a game. And we'll be back momentarily, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the casting again. It's been your host and caster, I Cup Fix.